Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Shadowrun Crossfire was a huge miss for me. Now, I do have a little bit of background in Shadowrun. It was an RPG I think I played one time when I was a kid, so I was kind of familiar with it, but I wouldn't say that I was into it. But it was enough to pique like, some nostalgia in me, like, okay, what is this? Let's see what this is. I remember the Sega Genesis game. Let's try this out. Whoa, this is not Shadowrun. And this may really upset some people when I say this, but this is matching icons of the game. That's all you're really doing in this. And there's this little campaign legacy thing where you're stickering things up. Total mess. Takes forever to level up. And I think you should just like level up and start playing the game and kind of jump off there because otherwise this is a grind. If you ever played Dragon Warrior for the Nintendo Entertainment Center, it was like this grind of a game. Dragon Warrior was a good game. I had a lot of fun when I was a kid. I don't know that I want to play something like that again. Too big of a grind. And this game is that. This is the RPG equivalent of a grind. And you just have to kind of get yourself up. What you're doing on your game is okay. It's fine. It wasn't going to pull me in, but it was just matching icons. Not a whole lot here. I think that's why this game fell so flat. You don't hear a lot about it. You never did. It didn't take off. It looked good, but didn't play good. And it felt like that campaign they kind of built up with the stickering system, it felt like nobody played it. Um, it just didn't feel like they tested it out for fun factor. And I think that's what this game is. It's boring. And not fun. Now, some people will say, hey, I love this game. It's my favorite game of all time. Fantastic. Not for me, and I'm the one speaking here today. It just just did not pull you in. It does have that cooperative nature where you're buying the cars. I do like the deck building that's in it. But I think you can get this somewhere else and a lot better. Now, if you like the Pathfinder game, I think this will kind of... I think this is where they were going. That Pathfinder game that came out, uh, Rise of the Rune Lord or whatever it was called. You know, they thought maybe people were going to really enjoy that. I don't think it hit as well as they hoped. This was kind of like the next evolution of that, and I think this one kind of fell even further. This isn't something I think you need to go back unless you're a big Shadowrun fan. For me, absolute purge. Here is Shadowrun Crossfire. It's a cooperative deck building game. You can see a very action-packed cover that we have here. And then when you open it up, there are some sleeves inside. You're going to have a player aid. This is very thin, but it just sits on the table. But they have this gloss over it. The same with these player things. You're going to get a few different one of these and some different scenarios and jobs that you can go through. They have this like nice little laminate gloss on them, but they are kind of thin. Just be aware of that. And you're going to get quite a few of these in here. Different characters and different jobs. Here's the dragon that you can go on. You're going to get a advertisement book from the company. You're going to get a storybook here that will be included a little short novel you have your rule book which we'll take a look at in a few and you can have an advertisement for shadow run online you're gonna have stickers and stuff that you can put on the different things as you play and then it looks like we have the welcome to the sixth world which is a little bit more about the world and kind of what's going on and some more reading of material here for you then you have a box and you're gonna have all your little chits in here these things are gonna be nice tokens that have damage and etc and they're all very nice cardboard with different symbols on them then you're going to get a bunch of cards and as you can see here there's a lot of space here to organize for future installments and a lot of places for cards that you're not utilizing at this time so that's good that they thought about that before they brought out the base game everything here is fine let's take a look at some of the artwork on some of the cards you're going to see a lot of icons it's going to be an icon matching game so a lot of words and icons but you can see here there's a katana that you have Hair programs. The artwork is very good when it's on there. And there's a lot of different artwork in this game. You can see all kinds of neat little things coming in here. So, very cool. And each of the decks that you have in the game will play a little bit differently. So, that's what you're going to get in the components. The cards are pretty good. They're a little thin, a little thin, but they're, they'll last. You might want to sleeve this, though, if you have the game. Here's a rule book. You're going to get a picture of the cover there, but nobody really cares about that. You're going to have new to deck building, new to shadow run, a little bit of background. Some quick start rules here if you want to get started and kind of shows you how to play. You're looking through here. Here's a sequence of play of what you'll be doing on a turn. And then you're going to have everything broken down. You have pictures, plenty of examples going through here. Plenty of stuff. And then you're going to have the full game rules that will come in over here. You can see that the black market cards and the runner cards and kind of how everything kind of 
sets up here. It's going to get into more detail what you're doing. If you're playing with fewer than four runners, the game is really set up as a four player game. How to go through that. Plenty of pictures you can see here. Uh, the rule book is going to go on and on. Here's some mission rules that you have. Extraction points, explanation to the cards, a fact. So they already had this kind of wrapped up in here when they printed it. Glossary of terms, lots to learn here. Finally, your credits and a picture of all the components and set up in the back. I don't know why that was in the back, but there she is in all her glory. So that's the rule book. I found the rule book to be okay. It's a little long. The game isn't complicated whatsoever. It's very easy to pick up. The rule book never got in my way. And there you are. My goal here isn't to teach you how to play the game necessarily, but just show you an overflow and show you some aspects of the game. What you're gonna have here is a character, and there are gonna be quite a few that are included in the game, which you can name and give slots to, and karma, etc. So you're gonna have all of these that you can choose, plus a few more. These are just some of those. So what are you gonna have here? You're gonna have your health track, and as you can see, everybody has a different amount. You can have slots. Well, you'll be utilizing this as you put stickers out and you're able to upgrade your game. So a little bit of a legacy component to this. And as you gain, you'll be able to add these to your different slots. You can see that you can have four of those and you can name your new character. You're going to have your meta type. So you can see the orc, elf, etc. You're going to have your starting hit points, your starting cards in your hand, and any starting money that you might have will be utilized here. And you can see 444. Four, four. Everybody's going to have it 525, five, a little bit different of a setup depending on which character you have. And that's kind of how these boards will work. You can see that the other side of it, you're going to have a description of the character that you can read, but you won't be able to read that while you're playing the game. Then the characters will take their starting cards. And depending on which character you are, now if I'm being the mage, I'm going to have four of these mage cards, a hacking card, a basic quick start, and a street smart. And this will be my deck as I start the game out. Then you're going to have a black market deck. And this will pretty much be where you'll be buying cards from. You're going to have the little icon up here that you'll be utilizing in attacks or whatever you're trying to do. The cost to purchase it. And then you will have an ability. So this one says draw one card, then discard. And then an assist ability will be on some of these that you can use on another player's turn. Here you have the two uh, fight icons at a cost of four. And then other weapons played this turn, deal plus one damage to each obstacle and boss. And you can see that each one has a different cost, different icons on them, and a different power or ability. And this will be the black market and cards that you'll be purchasing from during the game. You will also have two obstacle decks. One, which is easier with a one bold hole, and a two bold hole that will be a little bit harder. Each obstacle will tell you what you're trying to do to accomplish to defeat it the amount of money you get for defeating it, any powers that it might have, and down here is the attack strength of the card. This will be all information that will be utilized as you're going through the different obstacles. Keeping in mind, the two bolt holes is harder than the one bolt hole. The last deck of cards you'll have will be the Crossfire Event decks. And as you look at this, this will have things that you'll be going through during the game. Top shelf, each runner heals half of all their hit points they've lost rounded up. When this card is placed into discard, each runner takes two damage. A quick overview of the game is that players will turn over a crossfire event, which will apply for the round. Then they will apply their cards in order to do what they want to do for a round. And then the round will end. Then on the next round, you will do another crossfire event. You'll draw new cards. You'll take the actions that you want. And you'll repeat that process until you win or lose the game. Now, on your turn, the first thing you're going to do after you do the crossfire event is you will play cards down utilizing the abilities or whatever you want to do for the turn, and you'll have these cards played out in front of you as the game continues. That's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing you do in a turn is apply damage, and what you're trying to do is do a gun damage and three colorless damage. So in order to do a gun damage, I can play a card from my hand. I'm just setting it here so you can easily see which matches that icon. That means I have done that then I would have to do three colorless damage. Well, none of your starting cards have colorless damage, but as you can see here, this card from the black market receives one colorless damage. If I were to play this card, I would do a second colorless damage. And what you're trying to do is get this amount so you can defeat the obstacle. Once you defeat it, there may be a defeat option on it, and then you would just remove this from play, remembering you always are gonna accomplish obstacles left to right. Then the players will share the money that comes from that amount, in this case four points, 
and they will utilize that later on in the game to purchase black market cards that will have a cost associated with them to upgrade your deck. Now, if there are any obstacles left, so let's say we did not defeat this one, then the players will take damage with this in the bottom right corner. Then, if you have fewer than three cards in your hand, you will draw two cards when you need to draw, and now you can purchase cards from the black market. And you continue to do that until you meet the win or loss conditions. It is important to note that you also have these missions that can come out in the game that you can utilize with, that will kind of change up the rules a little bit and give you scenarios to go through. And these will be included in the base game. You either win or you lose the mission. At the end of the game, there's a campaign where you can utilize these stickers to upgrade your characters. And then when you go into the next mission again, you will be able to have a better character. And the whole game is about getting your characters built up to make these missions easier and easier, and there's plenty of expansions for you to go through. That's just a quick overview of the game and what you're doing. A lot of it is just matching the icons to the obstacles and trying to overcome them to meet the requirements of the mission. Who should buy this game? I'm going to say the game is not very strong. It's not a very good game. If you're wanting a cooperative game, and you want something where you can progress up and level up, this has that. If you're a fan of Shadowrun, this might be an insta-buy for you, especially if that cooperative uh, leveling up system sounds like fun to you, and you like the IP, I think it will definitely be a jump in for you. I think for everybody else, this will be a miss and a purge, and one that I don't think I would recommend to you.